Welcome to School of the Spirit. I'm your teacher, Pastor Philip Milms. You're invited to spend the next half hour with us where you'll be taught how to walk in victory by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God. Come and join us today as we continue our lesson. We pray that the Lord bless you with revelation and understanding from His Word. Thank you for joining us. Worship services are times of very high spiritual activity. And it's the reason you want to be here in person every time you can. And that's why it says, as the day approaches, you need to meet and you need to meet more and more. Why? Because there's a lot of things that heaven needs to communicate. There's a lot of spiritual activity that needs to happen. Whether you see it with your eyes or not, this is where your faith comes in. You need to believe the word and receive it by faith and then it happens. So we're told don't forsake the assembly. It's really important. When you come into the worship, it's in these times that the spiritual waters are being stirred up. It's like in the Bible, the pool of Bethesda, the pool where the sick people would sit around it, and then it said an angel would come down and it'd stir the water, and the first one that got into the water got the healing. In other words, it's a time of intense spiritual activity. There's a stirring that goes on during worship services. You can receive things and you can get things when you're present in the service that you would not have gotten otherwise. Okay, so it's not just about like we, we record this and we, we do podcasts because there are people who will listen who could never be here. This, this actually goes worldwide. And sometimes there's people who would like to be here who can't. And so it's available. But if you can be here, you need to be here for that reason, because if you're not, there are things that happen in the group that you don't necessarily get just because you went back and listened to something. You may get information, but you may have missed some revelation. You have, may have missed an answer to prayer and an impartation that you would have gotten had you been there in the meeting. Okay, so in other words, these are times of spiritual opportunities. There's opportunities to receive blessings to receive miracles, to receive those answers to prayer. It's a time of opportunity to give and worship under an open heaven. And then those heavenly messengers will take our offerings back to the throne of God. And then God receives those and he sends the answers back to us with blessing and with multiplication. It's an awesome time of spiritual activity and it's happening right now. Things going on in this room there are things that are being carried out in the spirit realm by angels who have been sent here from heaven to serve us and to minister to us. It happens every time. Now, do angels just do any old thing that we might tell them to do? And the answer is nope, they do not. So when we pray and we pray by the spirit, and when we speak things by the spirit, what that is, the Holy Spirit's in us. If you're speaking by the Spirit, remember you're the temple of God, then the word of the Lord is coming out of your mouth. And that is the word that they listen to and that they obey. Temple of God, God is inside of us. So it's his words coming out of our mouth. So when our words, when our heart and our words and our mouth line up and our actions line up with heaven, it lines up with the word of God, then those angels move into action. So when you say dumb stuff, all right, when you say carnal stuff, when you tell lies, when you're deceitful, if you're doing sinful things, they don't respond to that, except to maybe look at you with disgust. And the reason they do that, they're sent here for a purpose, one purpose, they have one job, and they're waiting on you to do what you need to do so they can do what they have to do. If they aren't active in their assignments, because we're carnal, they get frustrated at that. They're frustrated because we won't do what we're supposed to do, and so they can't. And the reason is we're kings, we have dominion. So our words and our actions are actually tying up their hands, so to speak. They can't do what they were sent to do till we align our actions and our faith and our words with heaven. So, can we command angels? We sure can. 
but there's a caveat. They will only do what they are assigned to do. So you can't just, as king in the earth, you're a sub-king, all right? You're a kinglet. You can't just arbitrarily decide that you're going to pull an angel off his assignment and go send him to do something else. Because you didn't send him, God did. First of all, he has to answer, first of all, to the higher authority. And he only hearkens to the words from your mouth when those words are the word of the Lord. That Psalm 103, 20 again, it says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So we don't just go around willy-nilly bossing around angels. You would be wise to be respectful and consider that they are here as messengers from the Most High King, from the throne of God. And each one of them is carrying a glory of heaven. And each one of them has an assignment and a purpose. And they only do what they are assigned to do by heaven, even though they do need our cooperation to do it in the earth. So we have to be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. Sometimes we just have to know what's in the room. You may not know the being, but all of a sudden you may just sense, oh, prophecy is in the room. Oh, healing is in the room. Well, I guarantee you there's an angel that came in carrying that. He brought it as a gift from heaven. They need our cooperation to do what they need to do. So why is that? And that's because Jesus has given us dominion over the earth. And down here, angels are subject to the church because we've been given dominion. Demons, we talked about this last week, are subject to the church. Both angels and demons are in subjection. In the earth realm, we have dominion. We have dominion. So spiritual beings, whether they're angels or demons, if they're in the earth, they are subject to us at a certain level. However, it's more about they can't do what they need to do until we get into agreement with heaven. It's, it's more about we have, like if we could get out of the way, <laughs> if, if they didn't have to mess with us, they could just come from heaven and do what they need to do. But it doesn't work that way. Like they can't do what they need to do unless we come into agreement with them. This is why we have to pray. This is why we have to listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit. When we're speaking and praying by the Spirit, the angels are moving. They're active. They're on assignment because they're able to come into agreement with both heaven and earth. Jesus taught us to pray like this, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That, there's a ton of revelation right there. First of all, heaven's assignments and heaven's will isn't automatically accomplished on the earth. We have to partner with heaven. Why? We've been given dominion. And Jesus himself will not come and overrule your authority. He will, and from the evil side, if you decide you don't want anything to do with him and you want to live in sin and you want to die and go to hell, he will let you. And it is not his will. The Bible says it is not his will that any should perish. Okay, if Jesus won't override your will, why would you think an angel would override your will? As a matter of fact, any spiritual entity that tries to override your will is not of heaven. That's what demons do. Demons are the ones that try to force their way in, to trick you and deceive you into doing things. And the reason they do that is because you have dominion. And if they can't trick you into doing it, they're bound. They can't do what they want to do. They have to get your buy-in, so to speak. So our mouth is more about if we don't come into alignment with, with heaven, we limit what God wanted to do. So, well, God's unlimited. No, in the Old Testament, he got angry with the Israelites because he said, you limited the Holy One of Israel. No, there was things God wanted to do didn't happen, and it was our fault. It was people's fault. We're kings, but we are under and subject to the Most High King. And angels are also servants of the Most High King. We have both an obligation to carry out the will of the High King. When I say we both, angels 
have an obligation to carry out the high king's will, and people have an obligation to carry out the high king's will. So lower kings can't just do whatever they please. So he or she has to do the will of the high king before an angel can legally carry out heaven's will in the earth. We have to cooperate together. Sometimes you will hear religious people or churchy people say things or talk about people maybe who have died. You know, someone dies, someone passes away. Maybe this is specifically someone who died young, died early. You'll hear churchy people say silly things like, oh, God must have needed another angel in his choir. Oh, we really don't understand why God took that, you know, that young person so early. God in his word has given us a promise of long life. He said, well, long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. That's out of Psalm 91. In other words, God put us here and he said, we ought to live a blessed life, long life, and we should die of a ripe old age. That's actually God's will. All right. We should stay here until we've done everything we need to have done, until we fulfilled the purpose that God sent us here for. And sometimes, not always, all right, but sometimes people will go home early because the enemy somehow gained access to their life. It could have been through sin. It could have been through things that they knew about, maybe some things they didn't even know about. All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go too far down that road. But the thing is, sometimes bad things happen. People don't live out their full life in the earth, even though it wasn't God's will for them to die early. But we know we can't live just any old sinful way, because if we do that, you can't expect to be under the blessing of divine protection. Divine protection involves the cooperation of angels. The divine. When you live contrary to the word of God, to the will of God, to heaven, and you're a king and you have dominion, that angel can't stop you from living that way, even if he sees you know, the train heading your way. So sometimes you know, we do things and, and we go, well, why, why didn't they have divine protection? You don't know, and it's, not your, it's really not your job to ask. Okay, your job is to live the way you're supposed to live, be led by the Spirit, believe for divine protection, and angels will cooperate with that. That's God's will, to provide di divine protection for you. But don't do things that would limit them. Don't, don't do things that would give Satan any opportunity. But sometimes people will die, and they'll die too early. You know, no matter, no matter how that happened, and people say, well, why did, why did God take them? Why did God take their lives? Well, if they belong to Jesus, God didn't take their life, but God will receive them. So, you know, you may, go to, you may show up to heaven early, and God will receive you into heaven, but that's not the same thing as God killing you. It's God taking your life. And when you show up, you're not an angel in the choir, all right? When you, when you go to heaven, you don't lose who you are. You, you are a spirit, and you have a soul, and you live in a body. So if the body dies, the spirit and the soul is still present. It just means you can't stay on the earth without the body. You have to go to heaven. But you're still you, all right? Whoever you were on the earth, how you were known on the earth, that's how you will be known in heaven. You don't become an angel. If we did, that would be a demotion. If we became an angel, that would be a demotion for us. I'll prove that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 2 and 3 says, Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, in other words, if, if it's our job to judge the world, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know you not that we shall judge angels? How much more? things that pertain to this life. Did you hear that? We, the church, Christians, will judge angels. You have to be in a higher position of authority to be a judge. We will judge the angels who disobeyed God and fell with Satan. So when the scripture uses angels there, it's not making the, a distinction between the two-thirds of angels that stayed in heaven and the third of the angels who fell. It's those fallen ones that we're going to judge. But we're not angels. We won't be angels. We aren't just messengers of God like they were. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. We're kings. We are created in His image and His likeness. 
because we are family. We're family. All right, if you would turn with me to Psalms. We won't, we won't be very much longer here. Psalms chapter 8, verse 4. All right, Psalms 8, verse 4 says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you've crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. Okay, so when the psalmist penned these words under the unction of the Holy Spirit, he was speaking as if he was an angel. In other words, this conversation really happened in the past. And the angels were watching God create man. And they're going, what is this? What are you creating? You're, you're creating something we, we've never seen before. He was speaking as if he was this angel looking on God at creation. And he was bewildered at what he was seeing. What is a man? You've given him dominion. You visit him. You think about him. They were like, you don't do that for us. They, it was making a difference. This was something they had never seen before. All right, and verse 5 says, you've created him a little lower than the angels. Okay, well, that's King James. But if you look at the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word here is Elohim. Elohim is the name of God. So the angels are actually saying, what is this that you just created a little lower than yourself? Flip over to Hebrews chapter 2. This is that mouth of two or three witnesses. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5 says, For unto the angels he has not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. In other words, what he's saying is, there's a world to come, and God has put it under us, not the angels. The, the, the angels aren't going to be in charge of the world to come. We're in charge of that world. Verse 6, but one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Does that sound familiar? Like we just read that in Psalms. Or the son of man that you visit him. Thou made him a little lower than the angels, and crowned him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of your hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Who's that? That's us. That's the church. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. What he's saying there is that Jesus came as, as men, as the son of men. We were created still in the image and likeness of God, right? We, we know Jesus has authority over angels but he came as a man for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. We know Jesus is not under the subjection of angels. And of, of course he's not. He came in the form of man. He bore the burden of sin to save mankind. And then Jesus was again, as the man was raised up, he was elevated and given all authority and his church, who is married to him, who is a co-heir with him, who is filled with the Spirit of God, and now seated with Jesus in the high places above everything, that church is joint heirs of salvation. Those angels are subject to us. Now listen, angels are not subject to fallen man. They're not subject to carnal men that they are under the authority of the church. Why? Because we've been raised with Christ and seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers, all right? And every name this name. So we hear that word principalities and powers, and the normal thing about demons, it, it's not talking about it. It's just talking about spiritual entities that rule in the heavenly places. That includes angels. So we, the church, are the agents of Jesus' authority to rule and reign on the earth 
for the kingdom of God. It's part of our job description. It's part of why we're here. And just like the king has servants and soldiers around him to carry out his word, these angels are placed here with us to carry out our words. But not just any words, right? They only hearken to the voice of Jesus' words when those words are in our mouth. So when we speak and we declare into the earth what Jesus is saying and doing, then the angels listen to us and they carry out that word in the earth. Okay, so there's a chain of command that's happening. It's a kingdom. It's a, a king is at the top and then there's levels and chains of command. So God is the father. He's the supreme ruler. And then Jesus has been by the Father, has been positioned above everything else. He's not above the Father, but he's with the Father. Jesus said, I only do what the Father says. I only carry out what I see the Father do and what I hear the Father say. And the Holy Spirit who lives in us is called our helper. He said he will show us things. He will speak of Jesus. He will tell you what Jesus is saying and doing. And that's John 16, 13 says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. And he says, he speaks of Jesus. So in other words, Jesus in heaven, he's one with the father. He gets his information from the father. And then Jesus shows it to the Holy Spirit who lives where? Who's in us. So it's direct lines of communication. The Holy Spirit speaks of Jesus and what he's saying. And when we learn to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying, and then we pray and we speak and we declare those words in the earth, then angels hearken into those words that originated from heaven, and they will carry out that assignment in the earth. They become our ministers. All right, so as kings, as we're kings in the earth, underneath the king of kings we are in a place of authority to the extent that we stay under that place of authority in jesus our prayers and our words are backed up by heaven to the extent that our prayers and our words are in alignment with what jesus is saying and doing we have rule here by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. That's how this works. And I'll give you just a couple scriptures and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. Proverbs 8, 15, as King Solomon is talking about wisdom. And he says, by me, by wisdom, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, wisdom, princes rule and nobles and even all the judges of the earth. Holy Spirit is called the spirit of wisdom. So how do kings reign? How do kings, how do kings and nobles and rulers and princes and judges in the earth operate? And, and who is that? It's us, right? It's the church. Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, spirit of wisdom. It is by wisdom that we rule and judge the earth. So last week, if you remember, we learned that Jesus operated in the earth with miracles, in miracles by the same anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And now we, we learn that Jesus delegated that same anointing to us. He's the head, we're the body. The commands come from the head, but the body, the church, is the vehicle that carries out those actions. The body is under the command of the head, yet the head and the body are one. And that's a picture of Christ and his church. We are one with Jesus, but we are under his authority. We only have authority in the earth to the extent that we walk under his umbrella of authority. In other words, we aren't to be lone rangers. He's king of kings. Revelation 20 verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, for on such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and they shall reign with him a thousand years. It's talking about us. 
that's specifically talking about us in the millennium when we have received our resurrected bodies. Not this mortal body, but that supernatural body. We will be reigning and doing the will of Jesus in the earth for a thousand years. And that's going to begin right after the time of tribulation. So people focus on tribulation and get all worried and upset about it. But, you know, depending on your tribulation theology, it's like three years of really bad times, you know, or, or seven years. Hey, that's a really short period of time. What that means is Jesus is wrapping it all up. And right after that, we are going to reign in this earth. And all that stuff that was here before, it's going to be gone. So don't let the word tribulation upset you. Tribulation is not about you. Tribulation is not about you. All right, wrapping this up right now. 2 Timothy 2, 12 says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. So reigning with Jesus on the earth means staying with him, obeying him, listening to him, and, and obviously not denying him, right? The scripture says, if we suffer with him. To suffer with him just means you. if you try to live like this, you will get persecuted by carnal men. They will go, you're nuts, right? Even the church doesn't think and talk and act like this, and that's the problem. But if you live your life like this, it's worth it. You'll live a life of authority and power. If you learn how to rule and reign now while you're still in this body, in this life, then when you get your resurrected body, he is going to give you a reward. He's going to assign you to rule over many cities on the earth in times to come. And we can talk more about that next time. Friend, if you've never made Jesus your Savior and Lord, would you please do it today? You can't afford to put it off one more minute. Your eternal destiny depends on knowing Jesus. Whatever situation you may be in, Jesus can take your life and make something beautiful of it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except that he comes through me. And Romans 10, 9 tells us that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we shall be saved. So if you would like to know him, repeat this prayer with me today and really mean it from your heart. Say after me, Jesus, I choose this day to make you Lord of my life. I believe that you are the Son of God, sent to the earth to pay the price for my sin by your death. I believe that you were raised from the dead and that you are alive today in heaven. Please take my life and do something great with it. Friend, if you prayed that prayer with me today and you meant it, then today is your birthday. Today is the day that you were born again into eternal life. We suggest that you find a good Bible-believing local church where you can connect with other Christian believers and grow in the Lord. This message has been brought to you today free of charge by the friends and ministry partners of Renaissance Christian Fellowship. If you've been blessed by this ministry, would you please consider partnering with us to help send the gospel message to others around the world? For more information on how to donate to this ministry, please visit our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash RCF World, or you may send us an email at contact us at rcfworld.com. Dot org. Again, that's contact us at rcfworld.org. You may give by debit or credit card directly at paypal.me forward slash rcfworld. Again, that's paypal.me forward slash rcfworld. Thank you for helping us to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world.